Every day, more and more of us begin video conferencing. So, in order to stand apart from the rest of the matting crowd, it is important for us to up our video conferencing game. Now, in my opinion, the best way for you to up your video conferencing game is to improve the quality of audio. But a lot of you are also interested in improving the quality of your video and adding a little bit of interest, a little bit of panache to your video. That's what we're gonna take a look at today. How do you add some panache to your Zoom videos on Dottotech? Steve Dotto here, how the heck are you doing this fine day? As more of us are gravitating towards Zoom as a conferencing tool, as we are working increasingly from home and having to do more and more video conferencing, I thought I would share with you, actually I didn't think I would share with you, so many people have been asking me in our comments in our other Zoom tutorials about how to use the green screen option and how to use the virtual background and the different video options that are built into Zoom. So I thought, you should do a video on that. That is what we are doing right now. So the screen that you see me in right now is actually my Zoom screen. I just don't happen to have anybody else in the room with me, but as a host of a room, this is what you will be facing. And down here in the very bottom of that screen is your video options. Now, actually there are two places within the room itself where you can set up different video options. One is down here, if we go down to the bottom and click, you can choose your different resources. I have, for example, have two different cameras that are enabled on my computer. One is my display eyesight because I'm using a Mac, so there's a built-in eyesight camera, which frankly sucks. And my Logitech Brio, which is my camera of choice, which you see me talking to you on right now. We can also go into the video settings here, which open this dialog box that allow us to control the overall video settings that we are displaying. For example, if we want to have the original ratio, if we have a webcam that doesn't necessarily broadcast widescreen, or if we're going widescreen. You can also choose to turn on and enable HD. The default is not to have HD turned on, and you'll see the quality difference when I turn off HD. I would think twice about turning on HD. It's one thing for me now when I'm recording this demo so I have good quality video on YouTube, but it's an entirely other issue if you are using your bandwidth to upload your video and you're in HD as you're broadcasting because it, as so many as there's so much extra stress on our systems, you might want to think about just broadcasting in standard definition because there's so much bandwidth being used up by all of the different people who are online that bandwidth is becoming increasingly dear. And I think we've all noticed a degradation in service of different, of different applications. So turning off HD might be a good idea for most video conferences, just food for thought. You can also mirror your video here, which basically flips the video if it's important to you, especially if you're pointing to things and you're verbally saying to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, and it's mirrored so everybody gets all confused. Now, if I say to the right, it is indeed to the right. If I say to the left, it's indeed to the left. Uh, but if I turn it back to the regular uh, non bearing video, then it's the opposite. The right for me is your left, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know why they do this, but they also have this thing. Let me, let me turn on. First of all, let me just show you what my video looks like. Let me move off to the side. There's my face. Hello, here's Steve's face. Do I need to be touched up? This is what touching up my appearance does, is it softens the focus on my face. It's sort of like when they used to put Vaseline on the lens for different Hollywood stars so that you didn't see the age wrinkles as much. I'm ready for my close-up now, Mr. DeMille, I might say, but uh, you can touch up your experience if you choose to. I don't know, it's not, it's not something that's very important to me, uh, but you can certainly do that. What people are really interested in is this the virtual background. And we can choose it from this dialog box here, or you can choose it as a pop-up right here saying choose virtual background. Now Zoom has the capability to be able to discern what your background is relatively well and key that out, in other words, block it out and bring another background in. So if I wanted, the, and they give you these presets. So if I wanted the Golden Gate Bridge, I'd just choose it. But as you can see, when I move my head around, it doesn't do a very good job. The reason, 
And it would do a good job if they had a, a nice white background, but I have a very busy background here in my office. And I've set up my office just like this because I wanted to have a living set. I wanted to have something that brought people into my home environment and made them feel comfortable. And that's why I've got this set that's set up to be an interesting environment that I shoot in. But a lot of you don't necessarily want that. A lot of you want to block off the signs of your real life. Uh, perhaps there's a mess behind you or you just don't want, you don't think it's professional to be seen in your home environment. So you have the option of using the virtual background. If you've got a fairly neutral background, it will work well. But if you don't have a fairly neutral background, then you want to use a green screen. And I'll show you the green screen in just a minute. I'll set mine up. I'll go through the process of setting it up. It's a pain in the ass. I don't like doing it all that much, but I'll do it just for you, just because I know you want to see it. But before we do that, they give you a whole variety of options here, a small selection of options of, of, of backgrounds and videos that you can play in the background uh, if you want to kind of up your, up your background game. But you can also put your own backgrounds in. If you have a branded background that you want for your business or you've got an image that you think is a good idea, you can upload that image. Now, I did, I went on my walk today, I took an, a picture, a lovely picture of the marina by my house. And there it is. So there I've got the marina in place. So, so you can put your own picture in. Now you can imagine if you're a corporate identity, you might want to have uh, your logo and your corporate in information here. Uh, so you can do use it from a professional or from a comfort and kind of a personal basis of adding these images. Plus, if you do a search online, you're going to find dozens of other services that will allow you to download and purchase backgrounds. So you can have yourself on the, on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise or any other environment that you choose that you want. You can license and you can purchase background images that are pre-baked for you. But as I say, looking at the quality, and it, it does, it looks kind of, it looks hokey because it keeps cutting in and out because it's having trouble resolving the background that I'm against. So let me show you how it looks when we set up the green screen. So I guess I better set up my green screen first. Uh, just give me a minute here. It'll take me a few seconds. I got one of these pop-up green screens. It's a, It's got a metal it's got a metal band running through it that's, uh, that's st steel that pops open. It, it, it maintains a memory and it holds it taut. You can also get green screens that are pipe based. That's uh, basically just a cloth that you pull in a pipe and you stretch out. Uh, those are even more awkward to set up than these, but this is kind of an explosion. The, farly, the dog hates it when I do this. Uh, I better get the stand ready first. I gotta, no. So this has got a single point stand that I can open up. What do I do for you guys? There we go. Got it. Not, nobody was hurt. I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Ah. There we go. Yeah, I need that. Okay. We got it. I just got to get it centered. Just give me a minute here and I'll get this figured out. I got to go this way here. There we go. All right. Oh, the dog's here. Okay, uh, Farley, get out of there. Get out of there. You're going to mess everything up, Farley. It's not great. It's not terrible. Oh, gosh. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how the background looks now once I use the green screen. And you see how much better it is now? Oh, wait a minute. Let me get to... Oh, Farley. Ah! He just made a break for it. Woo, woo! Okay, so now I've got it set up. So let's, uh, so we can see the green screen here behind me. And I, what I did is I actually zoomed my camera in a little bit. I used my camera settings to zoom it in because the uh, field was too wide. Uh, so that's something that you're going to have to pay attention to. Uh, but now I can choose that nice background that I had and look at the beautiful background. And you see how now, because the green screen is in place as I move around, it keys it out nicely and it looks very natural. It looks really good. It looks almost, almost realistic. Now, I should point out that you may have trouble. It may not pick up the color of your green screen right away. And if it does, there's a little eyedropper tool here that this is what could happen to you. You could end up with something like this, which is when you, when you go to create it, which is uh, it's picked up the wrong color. It hasn't recognized the color of your green screen. And you could use a different color. You could use a blue screen or you could just use the color of your wall at that particular case. But if you pick up the color, all you do is you go into the settings here you choose this kind of little crosshair tool and then you click on, let me turn it on again, 
you click on, see how I've got a little plus there? You click on the green screen, and that tells the computer what color to key out in the background. And you can have a, you can have something like a, a still image, as we said, or you could have, this is, this is very cool. Look at how cool the Aurora Borealis looks behind me now. That is pretty awesome, I think. So it's pretty easy for you to change out the background if you want to improve the quality of your video conference. I think where this is really most important, it, 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 it eliminates boredom for us in a lot of cases, but where this is important and where it works well is if you have branding or you need to set some sort of a corporate identity and you want to include that. And since we don't have the option of welcoming people into our offices now, we can project our office out into cyberspace to whoever it is we happen to be visiting with. I hope that you found this useful. Looking forward to your comments and suggestions. I read each and every one. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you found it valuable. Share it with your friends. And if you've not yet subscribed to the Dotto Tech channel, please subscribe and make sure you ring the notification bell so you hear when any new videos are published. We've got a whole series of videos on how to use Zoom. I encourage you to watch those and again, share those. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. <laughs>